Hello, I'm Mimi. I'm a digital illustrator and today we're going to be making an inspiration mood board for our illustrations so that we can collect lots of ideas together and then create an illustration from that board. Not every creative is the same, but a lot of us artists are visual people. So mood boards are a really great way to collect ideas and get organized in a visual way. And I like that they're a bit of a mind map that I can come back to anytime I need a refresh on that inspiration. In the past, I've made physical mood boards, which are really fun to make, but take up a lot more space. So now I use digital mood boards like the one that I use to plan my product shop photo shoot, which is why I'm really excited to share that this video is sponsored by Milanote. Milanote is a tool for organizing creative projects and it feels a lot like making a physical mood board where you can take ideas, notes and images and stick them all down on a big board, except that it's digital and I can also collect images and links from around the internet and collate them all in one space. I'll quickly show you the board that Dan and I made for our recent photo shoot to give you an idea of how it works and then we can make a new mood board full of cozy autumn inspiration for our illustrations. So we separated our planning into a shot list, list of things we needed to prepare or buy and then three locations around the house that we needed to set up. All of the settings have a list of things that we need for the photo shoot and also a mood board of the kind of general vibe we're going for with that setting. Then we have a whole shot list board where we have examples of the actual shots we wanted to get in each setting and even if we didn't get them all at least it gave us a reference point so that we weren't making all of these decisions on the day which helped us a lot. So let's make a new board that we can put lots of inspiration in for some illustrations and I'd like to theme it around cozy autumn inspiration. You can see that I already have a couple of mood boards on other themes and I'd like to keep adding these because they're really fun to make and I can revisit them anytime I'm looking for some inspiration ideas on these themes. I'll make a new board and I can change the color of the cover and Melanin has lots of icon suggestions based on the title of my board which is actually pretty clever and a nice surprise. So I could choose a template from the big library available but I'm going to start our board from scratch so that I can do what I like with it and I'm going to be adding photos, color palettes and some lists of ideas so let's get started. I'll search for autumn aesthetic images on Pinterest to see if anything sparks my interest. And of course, there are lots of great photos here. And I've added the Milano extension to my browser so that I can directly save images from websites to my mood board, which will save me a lot of time saving images and then uploading them. It brings it right into my mood board and I can just drag and drop it wherever I like and then find some more inspiration. I'm looking for photos that have rich autumn colors or nice compositions, cozy subjects, really anything that inspires me in some way. Then if I have any specific ideas, I can search for those. Like I thought a big chunky scarf would be nice. And then I definitely want some cute animals as well because quite often the characters in my illustrations are animals rather than people. So now I can drag and drop all of these images onto my mood board and arrange them however I like. I love this photo of the golden retriever in the leaves. It's so cute. So I want the image to be bigger than the others because I like it the most. I'm sort of grouping the images together roughly so that the animal inspiration is all together and then that the environments are all together along with any extra photos. Something that I really like to have on a mood board is a color palette. And one of my favorite features of Milano is being able to eyedropper colors from the images in my mood board. So I can take colors directly from the photos that I brought in as inspiration. I tend to use the eyedropper to grab a color to use as a base. And then I adjust them a little bit to build a palette that has a range of values from light through to dark. The palette not only serves as inspiration, but also when I decide to illustrate something from this mood board, I can just use this palette if I want to. And that's one less decision I have to make when starting my illustration. So now that I have some lovely photos and a color palette, I'd like to brainstorm a few simple ideas on this theme based on what I've collected so far. And if I wanted to, I could challenge myself to illustrate all of these as a series and tick them off as I go. 
Setting up a mood board like this when I'm feeling inspired and have room to come up with ideas helps so much when I'm feeling a bit stuck because I can just come back here and have a look through these ideas and images and pick something out to draw without having to put so much thought into it. Another list I'll make is just ideas for characters within this theme because that might also spark some ideas. And since I often draw animals, I'll think of some autumn animals and I can use the photos that I brought in as inspiration. Now the last thing I want to add to my mood board today is a few images of other illustrations within my cozy autumn theme. It's of course really important to never copy another artist, but sometimes seeing other art is just the thing you need to spark an idea of your own, so it's nice to have a few examples of work from other artists. I make sure that with these I find out who the artist is and add their credit at the bottom so that I know who illustrated it, and if I've saved the image directly from a website then that link stays with the image and I can always find where I got it from. So now I have lots of ideas and inspiration in this mood board that I can draw something from and also come back to anytime I'm looking for something to draw. It's really nice to have everything in one place, including a color palette that I have full control of. And it took me literally about 20 minutes to put this whole board together. So it's quite easy to make a few on different themes pretty quickly. I think if I wanted to draw a series of images on a particular theme, then this would be an amazing way to create a foundation for that. But today I'm not going to be drawing a series of images, I only have time for one. So I'm going to have a look over my autumn mood board and think about what ideas stand out to me the most and if I want to mix and match any of these ideas to form my illustration. I'm really drawn to this adorable picture of a golden retriever so I think I have to draw something with a happy dog in a pile of leaves. I don't want to use the same composition, just a similar concept. So I'll need to sketch out a couple of ideas to see how I could take this inspiration and transform it into something of my own. I can just download images from my mood board to use them as a reference in Photoshop. I also downloaded another reference of a golden retriever from Google Images. And I'm gonna make a basic color palette on my artboard as well using the colors I had on Milanote. Now I haven't done any other sketches or prep before starting this, so it'll be a bit of an experiment and you can see my real process here of developing a couple of rough ideas and refining them until I land on something that I'm happy to illustrate in color. I thought about drawing the dog sitting up and out of the leaves, but I think it feels less fun. So I'm gonna go with the option where just the dog's head is sticking out from the leaf pile. I want to see if I can create a bit of energy with the leaves as if the dog has kind of burst through them. So I've got a few flying in the air up the top and I've just been kind of making up these leaf shapes so far. So I'll grab one of the reference images that I had on Melanote to refine these leaf shapes to something just a little bit more accurate. Now I'm ready to start coloring everything and my general process every time I draw is to use my sketch layer as a reference on top of everything else. I make it about 20% opacity and then multiply blend mode so that I can always see it on top of any color layers. And then I go through all of my elements and color them in on new layers below. Generally, different colored elements get their own layer, and this illustration is quite unique because I'm doing a big pile of different colored leaves, which is something I don't often draw. So my strategy is to color in the base of the leaf pile as one big color blob, and then add a few layers of different colored leaves on top, with any leaves of the same color going all on one layer together. I like to use a lot of layers in my illustrations because I find that it helps make it a lot easier for me to add texture, shading and detail to separate elements later on. I have so much fun drawing this illustration. I think it's because it's something new and maybe it also helps that I had all my inspiration and references ready to go so I don't have lots of decisions to make while I'm drawing. Ooh. 
Although it looks a little complicated to have so many leaves, it's actually quite simple because I'm kind of just trying to make a pattern of overlapping leaves in different colors. And the only real detailed part of this drawing is the face of the dog. And I mean, what's not to love about drawing a happy doggo? So once everything has a base layer of color, I go through and add texture to everything using a really broad texture brush. For this, I'm mostly using a brush called Carl's Natural Feel Brush, which is available direct from Adobe, but you can really use any soft texture brush that has a sort of crayon effect. Adding the texture for me is where things really start to come to life because it takes things from being flat and adds a lot more visual interest and I can also use this texture as shading as well. I also really enjoy going through and adding fine details to the leaves and because I've drawn all of the leaves that are on the same color on their own layers, it's really easy for me to draw details that are clipped just to the leaves of that color. And I do that by drawing all of the details on a different layer above the shapes of the leaves and making that new layer a clipping mask. It sounds complicated to say it out loud, but I promise it isn't. And I have a whole video available on my Patreon for beautiful bluebells about adding texture to your illustrations in Photoshop and Procreate if you'd like some more info on how to do that. So I just spend a while adding details and some extra shading to everything. And honestly, I really enjoyed drawing this illustration. It was surprisingly simple to create. It just took some time to draw all of the details and go through all of the leaves. So all in all, I spent just over two hours drawing this from when I started the sketch to when I finished. And so that's how I make an inspiration mood board and then create a digital illustration from it. If you'd like to try Melanote for yourself, you can sign up for free using the link in my description. And if you follow me on Instagram, keep an eye out for this drawing because I'll be posting it to my feed. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to see arty videos from me every week. Also, if you'd like access to my drawing tutorials and monthly illustration club, then consider joining my community over on Patreon where I share lots of goodies every month and you can even browse the main articles and videos that are available before you join via the Patreon page on my website. I'll leave those links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.